everybody. How are you? Hi, Saeed. Good to see you. Okay, good to be back with you. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're all having a great day. It's like 20 degrees in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hot. It's under the lights, it gets hot, so it feels oh, nice to have it a little cooler. Brisk. Okay, um, I want to start out by telling you uh, a, sort of a theme week that the administration is having, and they're calling it American Heroes Week. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to talk with you a little bit about uh, the terrific work that so many of our colleagues are here doing here at the State Department and also USAID. So bear with me here, it's a little lengthy. Uh, American Heroes Week, the administration is bringing attention to the work that so many Americans are doing to help others around the world. In my time at the State Department, I've been impressed by the hard work and the service of foreign service officers and civil servants at the State Department and also USAID, and I want to highlight some of that work for you. Around the world, the Department of State and USAID are leading efforts to fight disease, feed the hungry, and reduce instability, all of which makes us safer here at home. America's proactive and decisive leadership is saving lives by mitigating public health crises, such as the spread of Ebola and Zika viruses, and staving off famine as the world faces the worst food security crisis since World War II. When I was a reporter, I saw firsthand the dedication of USAID staffers and its pride that they felt when I visited Sudan in 2004. I remember the pride that I felt when I first saw the slogan, From the American People, stamped on a bag of wheat that was distributed in South Sudan and also Darfur. The United States also remember, remains a leader in global health, working daily to drive advances in the prevention, the care, and the treatment of HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria, while saving millions of preventable diseases like cholera and polio. In the last 15 years, our government-funded interventions have contributed to a 45% decrease in maternal deaths and a 51% decrease in deaths of children under five. We also support U.S. citizens abroad. In the past eight months, we've provided emergency assistance to or helped coordinate travel to safe locations for U.S. citizens who are in South Sudan, in Russia, in Belgium, Peru, New Zealand, and other places in the wake of natural disasters or civil unrest. In 2016, we assisted 5,461 international adoptions. I know how happy those families are to have those little babies. And we enrolled 3,821 3, children in a program that's aimed at preventing international parental child abduction. We support the security of U.S. borders while also facilitating the legitimate travel. In fiscal 2016, we issued non-immigrant visas to more than 10 million foreign nationals to study, visit, and do business in the United States. International visitors contribute more than $240 billion to the U.S. economy, supporting more than 1 million U.S. jobs. As many people will note, during the summer travel season, we help Americans see the world. Since the beginning of fiscal year 2017, we've issued 15.6 million passports for U.S. citizens and nationals in order to travel abroad. If a storm could disrupt your vacation plans or if you get sick from drinking the water or anything else, we alert you to our travel warnings, uh, the alerts, and country-specific information. That is always a good reminder that regardless of wherever you're traveling, you go to our State Department website and uh, let us know where you will be. In a case of emergency, we'll be able to reach you and you can reach us. Life-saving and tireless work of our diplomats and aid workers embodies America's dedication to creating a safer and more prosperous world. Our assistance abroad is a testament to the generosity and the goodwill of the American people, and I'd like to thank my colleagues here at the State Department for doing such incredible work around the world. And with that, I will gladly take your questions. Thanks. Can I just ask, the, the, this American Heroes Week and mm -hmm. the sentiments that you just expressed yeah. are an administration-wide, this is an administration-held sentiment? That is correct. So if, if the State Department and its employees do so much good work, why does the administration want to slash the budget by a third and cut, you know, thousands of jobs? The administration believes that it has to do more with less, and that is part of it. Uh, we're striving to become more efficient. Part of that is taking a look at the reorganization. But when all of this is said and done, we will still remain the largest and most generous leader in humanitarian response around the world, and that will not change. Okay. Um, 
I guess, if you say so. Um, the uh, I think that there are probably people in this building or elsewhere who disagree with you. Sir. Well, but anyway, I think, let's I move think on to. I think agree. We will still remain okay. the most generous donor of any country around the world. Can I ask you just a couple, uh, very briefly, two things yeah. about the secretary? Sure. Uh, one is it. Uh, is it true or false that he's thinking about re resigning or leaving the administration early? That is false. Uh, okay. We have spoken with the secretary. Uh, the secretary has been very clear. He intends to stay here at the State Department. We have a lot of work that is left to be done ahead of us. He recognizes that. He's deeply engaged in that work. Uh, we have meetings scheduled. He has meetings scheduled uh, for the rest of the week here in Washington. Uh, he does, however, serve at the pleasure of the president, just as any cabinet okay. official would. And so that means you spoke to him today, because this seems to be gaining new life well, every hour. Well, so I had, know, everyone, was it loves, recent everyone loves to report on palace intrigue stories. The secretary is committed to staying, and I'll right, leave it at but, that. But, but, but you talked to him today? I, I have not seen him today. The secretary no, is out for travel. Yeah, no, no, I understand that, but I'm just wondering that leads into my second question, uh -huh. which is if you did speak to him today, or someone did, did he have any thoughts about the speech that the president made to the Boy Scouts last uh, So yesterday? the secretary, uh, as you well know, uh, was very involved in, in the Boy Scouts, and he was out there on, on Friday speaking to the group. Uh, the secretary is aware of the president's comments. Um, I think when uh, all is said and done, those Boy Scouts, what they will remember from the jamboree in West Virginia is that the president showed up. And that's a pretty incredible thing that the president went there. Other presidents have as well, but for the president to show up, that's a big honor for these young boys. And if anyone has any questions or concerns about the president's remarks, I would leave it for the parents to characterize those remarks, not me from the State Department. Uh, no, I'm not asking you to yeah. characterize them at all. But the, the secretary didn't have an issue, a problem I, with it, given his given his past I experience with I, the My Boycast, understanding Boycast. is that the secretary had invited the president out himself personally. Um, to the, the jamboree. To the jamboree. Knowing um, that he wasn't going to be there. Um, no, that the secretary. Wasn't. I don't see that as being. No, 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 no. I'm just issue. curious. I mean, the secretary went when he was able to go, and the president went when he was able okay, to go. But he and that's, did, I think that's the takeaway. But he did not, the secretary did not express any uh, opinion one way or another on the what the president said. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could I just okay. follow up? Uh, anything on, else on, on the that? Secretary. Hold on. Before we go to Israel, Palestine, no, no, and stop. Let's secretary. go to Israel. I want to ask you on the secretary. You have a question about this? Of course. All right, Saeed. Yeah. Let's go. Well, you know, He's according a man to, of I mean, it's interests. related. Yes. I ask about everything. So it is related. Uh, according to the Jewish Telegraph Agency, the Zionist Organization of America called on the secretary to resign because of the human rights report, because there is a passage in the report on the, yeah, I'm sorry, the, the terrorism report, thank you, ma'am, on the terrorism report of uh, last week, because uh, they say there is a passage where the secretary was, or, or, or the report says, that, you know, exacerbating the situation is the fact that the Palestinians have no hope, uh, that there is increased of settlements and so on, and in fact they call the report, that's their quote, bigoted, biased, anti-Semitic, Israel-hating, and terrorism. Do you have any comment on that? Yep. So uh, what you're referring to is the counterterror report that right. the State Department puts out. This is something that the State Department puts out every right. year right. as mandated, right. mandated by Congress, and right. then that gets delivered right. to Congress. Right. So in that report, we consistently highlight terror attacks perpetuated against right. Israelis. And right. I'm just talking about the Israel portion because this is a, a, a worldwide report. Uh, those terror attacks that are perpetuated uh, against Israelis by Hamas and, and others. There is no justification, mm -hmm. and we will say that time and time again, mm -hmm. there is no justification for any acts of terrorism. Mm -hmm. The Secretary of State is staying here, he will remain here, and that will mm -hmm. not change. Okay, so you don't really have a comment on an organization calling for his resignation? I, I do. Has, you know, has look, he been, there, there are has he been made aware of this? There are organizations around the world who will take issue with certain things that the State Department does. Right. Um, and so I'm not going to get into commenting or characterizing every single one of them. Thank Can you. I go back to okay. the beginning? Hi. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Nice to see you, uh, Michelle. Uh, oh. Can you talk a little bit about the reform plans? Since you said he's he's here to work on the reform plans, there's been a lot of rumors out there from, you know, moving consular services to DHS to closing which, war crimes office. Hold on, let me stop you right there because yeah. um, consular affairs, uh, which is a huge part of what we do it here, as you know, uh, they help adjudicate visas. Um, it's an important part of the work, and that's one of the things that the secretary has said that he believes that the State Department is the rightful home for consular affairs. There's been some inaccurate reporting on that, that it would move to the Department of Homeland Security. The Secretary intends to have it stay stay here. 
Okay. Is, are there other, you know, there's a lot of rumors out there yeah. on a lot no, of no, different no, offices. That's why I want to Can you so, give us? So let me just say, uh, in any case, when you have questions about a story, you know, you don't need to go ahead and just report it without checking. And I'm not speaking to you personally, just as a general matter please feel free to email us, to call us, so that we can try to set the record straight and make sure that you have the most accurate and uh, up-to-date information. I'm seeing too many stories out there these days that uh, are inconsistent with that. And can you, give us, so can you give us an, an update on when he expects to have this reorg done um, and, and some, you know, timing of that and, and how many jobs or offices he's expecting to close down? Yeah, there, so overall, um, the reorganization is uh, the redesign, uh, reorganization, re redesign, whatever you want to call it, is, is underway. Uh, we're looking at a, a lot of different part departments. Uh, there are a lot of functions that are handled here at the State Department. Um, my understanding is that September 15th, I believe it is, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, Sept September 15th, we have to provide a report to uh, the Office of Management and Budget. And there will be some information that will be uh, submitted to them. And, and again, jump in if I'm wrong here because we haven't talked about this in a, in a few days. Um, but that is something that uh, OMB will then have an opportunity to take a look at. There are steering committees that have been, been put together here at the State Department that head up uh, five different components or five different areas. Uh, let me try to find what exactly each one is for you. So uh, they're working groups, actually. Uh, overseas operations is one. Foreign assistance operations is number two. Human capital planning is another. IT platforms and also administrative services. So we have asked our employees, uh, not just here in Washington, but around the world, to take part in that. We've put together some working groups. Uh, people can provide us information, and we'll figure out best practices and how we should change things to alter the State Department to keep it in line with the 21st century. Thank you. Anything else on that, Michelle? That's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so my understanding is that there are about a dozen people working in each of those working groups. So is it their full-time job now to be working on the restructure of the State Department? And if so, who's filling their you know, daily, um, what they were doing daily before that. Uh, let me get back to you on that. I don't believe that that is the case. I believe that they are uh, also involved in their existing projects as well. But let me get back to you, okay? Okay. Okay, anything else on, on our uh, redesign here? Okay. Well, anything okay. else on redesign? Just, slightly, hold on, just hold raise your hand if you have anything else on the redesign. To we'll move secretary, on. To Matt's questions about okay. the secretary, though. Um, you said he was traveling today. His, yes. his public schedule said, no available appointments today. Said the same thing yesterday. Um, last Thursday, it listed nothing, and we know he was on Capitol Hill briefing the House. He was at the Pentagon with the President. Can you say why we're not being told where he is? Well, he does have the uh, he does have the ability to go away for a few days on his own. So just on just right taking a little time off. He's got a lot of work. He just came back from that uh, mega trip overseas, as you all well know. Many of you were there with the G20 and his other travel as well. So he's entitled to take a few days himself. Of yeah. course, I don't think anyone's arguing against that. But but why not just say he's on vacation then? I, I don't know what sta is standard for uh, secretaries of state how they how they actually list uh, private days. Um, I can check to see what the prior arrangements were. Matt Lee probably knows as our State Department historian, but uh, <laughs> that I'm not aware of. I, uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, that's pretty but standard. A, but, okay. But a, pub, but a public event like on Friday, as we've discussed, understood. Not understood. Okay. Uh, let's move on there. Hi there. Hi Heather. Um, so uh, Secretary Tillerson said of the Senate bill that he had concerns about limiting his flexibility. The Russia sanctions. You're talking bill. about Russia sanctions. Yes. Okay. Um, the administration has kind of signaled that uh, it's supportive, I guess, of the House version. Um, what is the secretary's position on the House bill? Well, uh, I'll say this again, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry to disappoint you with something I've said many times right, before. Right, but he has commented on pending the Pending legislation. And so uh, that would be considered pending legislation. Mm -hmm. It's something uh, that has not, that is still in draft form, mm -hmm. is my understanding. So I'm not going to get ahead of that, and I'm also not going to comment on any pending legislation. But the secretary, I think, has been firm about sanctions on Russia. Uh, we've talked a lot here about the issues facing Ukraine, how we expect and we intend, fully intend, those sanctions to remain in place until Russia stops the provocative actions that cause those sanctions to be placed mm -hmm. in the first place in Ukraine. 
do his comments about the Senate bill that he made a month ago still stand? I think I think that's uh, for the secretary to speak to himself. I don't want to get ahead of the secretary on that. Uh, I know he's remained uh, concerned. He's followed the situation in Ukraine very closely and feels that Russia needs to do a lot more before we're going to, you know, if we no, were to but, ever change something mm -hmm. related to that. And then just very quickly on um, – uh, Russia saying yesterday or earlier today that it um, it uh, almost telegraphed that it wants to get involved in the GCC issue. Um, is that something the U.S. welcomes? I think uh, first what I would say about, about GCC is that uh, we hope that all the sides will get together and have a meeting and sit down face to face. We're still waiting for that to happen and think that that could help advance uh, the prospects for a resolution. Uh, that has not happened yet. We hope that that will happen sometime soon. If Russia can play a role, um, and by the way, um, uh, Kuwait is still, you know, the technical uh, mediator of sorts uh, holding that. If, uh, if Russia can play a role in helping to bring the sides to the table, I think we would welcome that. We might be skeptical of whether they'd be able to do that or not, but we would certainly welcome that. Uh, if anyone were to be able to help bring those sides together. On the second page, uh, yes. you know, the, there's been reports that the, the president has taken the secretary out of the Iran deal certification process. Do you have any comment on those we reports? We have been incredibly, yeah. as, as you all know, right. very, yeah. very involved throughout that entire process. It, it has been a State Department thing, but now yeah. it seems and, that, and that the changed. president wants to change well, this, is, this has not changed. Okay. The State Department will remain um, just as involved as it always has yeah. in the Iran situation. So do you expect yeah. that in three months uh, the Secretary of State will either certify or not certify? That I'm, the I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to get ahead okay. of what may happen over the next three months. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Okay. okay. Hi. I'm Michelle. I mean, I, I think his question kind of went back to what we had been asking before about mm -hmm. the Secretary's role vis-a-vis -vis the White House. Is he happy with the amount of freedom he has to make the decisions that he wants to make at this point? So uh, I would say that this is a, a deliberative process. Um, the secretary, as do all other cabinet officials, meets with the president and the president's national security advisors and cabinet members. Um, that is something that's normal, that's customary. They sit down, they have a healthy dialogue and conversations about the heaviest and the weightiest foreign policy issues. Sometimes people may, and I'm not saying this as it pertains to Iran, but in general, they may agree, they may not agree on different situations, and that is what's healthy in a democracy to have those conversations. Ultimately, the president is in charge of this country. He decides, he's the boss, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. And, and since we're on Russia, if you don't mm -hmm. mind, um, uh, in talking about sanctions, you always, or I, I would say you generally specify um, that the secretary is committed to these sanctions over Ukraine. Correct. Um, what about his stance on the penalties on Russia over um, meddling in the U.S. election? To my knowledge, nothing has changed on, on, on that, um, in terms of that. I think the secretary has been, has been clear in his position that uh, Russia meddled in the election. I, I know you've asked me a lot about that particular uh, issue, um, and we continue to have concerns about it. Anything else on Russia? Anything else on Russia? Yeah, one of those penalties okay. is the, is, was the seizure of the two compounds. Yes. And that is up for negotiation with, with the Russians to actually return Well, them. that actually that actually would not be considered uh, a sanction. Well, I said penalties. Oh, okay. Um, so regarding the Dashas, and everyone's so obsessed with the Dashas. Um, but regarding that, those conversations are ongoing. Um, as you know, uh, Mr. Shannon here, Tom Shannon, has been engaged in conversations with his counterpart. No decisions have been made on that whatsoever. Um, and so I can't get ahead of what's going to happen, but uh, we do know that they were involved in some nefarious activities here in the United States, and we had the right and the ability to um, – Russia still owns them, by the way. I want to be clear about that. But we had the ability to uh, – have people leave from that facility and contain those facilities because of activities that were taking place there. You know who's the most about the Dodgers? The Russians. Yeah, of course they are. I mean, when you talk to the Russians exactly. and they have conversations. But it's not you, us. No, no, no. I, not well, us well, that, you're, about it. that is a fair point, Matt. But when you talk to the Russians about things like uh, civilian deaths in Syria, it seems that they often want to talk about Dodgers more. 
Okay. Uh, anything else on Russia? Okay. Okay. Uh, hold on, uh, Nazira. Let me come back to you. Uh, from Ukraine. Hi. Yeah. So, um, there are you. So, Ambassador Volker was in Eastern Ukraine on his uh, first trip to that region. He gave mm -hmm. some interviews to international media while he was there. Do you have any details on what was accomplished during his visit and uh, any kind of time frame for a decision on whether to provide? Uh, lethal weaponry to the rebels there? So, um, uh, Special Representative Volker, um, not sure where he is at this hour right now, but um, spent time in the eastern part of Ukraine. As many of you know, that's considered a fairly dangerous area. We've seen a real uptick in violence recently. Uh, Thirteen or more um, uh, Ukrainian soldiers have been killed as a result of that Russian Russian-led attacks on those soldiers. Uh, one of the things that our special representative did, he went out with the um, OSCE monitors. They are the people on the ground who are monitoring the situation. Um, we have continued to have very serious concerns. Uh, we have talked about this from the podium, about the monitors' ability to do their jobs. They are uh, the eyes and ears on the ground to be able to assess and give us uh, good reporting about the situation there. So he went out with the OSC monitors to see, uh, unfortunately, just how dangerous their job is right now. I know that's one of the things that he was doing. He wanted to start to get the ground truth. Um, his uh, job will be trying to bring the parties from the Normandy format back to trying to negotiate something so that uh, we could get closer to uh, adhering to the Minsk Accords. I don't have any readouts for particular meetings with you, but uh, when, when uh, Mr. Volker comes back, I'll uh, see if I can get him back in here to give you all a, good, a better debrief. And the arms for Ukraine? Yeah. So um, there was a BBC report uh, headline. You know, sometimes the headline writers, you all would know this, will get ahead of the story. Um, so there was a headline that implied that we were in the process of, of doing what you just described. We are not there yet. Um, let me take out the word yet. We are not there. The United States has not provided defensive weapons, nor have we ruled it out to provide to the Ukrainians. Okay. All right. Anything else on Ukraine? Okay. okay, let's talk Afghanistan. Uh, as we are approaching the end of July, do you have any update on the policy review? Why is it delayed? Um, you know, this is something, uh, gosh, uh, we've been in Afghanistan for uh, 16 years now. Uh, it's something that I know the administration cares deeply about. I know General McMaster, uh, General Mattis, and others care deeply about this matter. It is a complicated situation in Afghanistan. The policy review is still underway. It will be underway until they make a determination uh, for the best way forward. Uh, there are other reviews we've talked about that are still underway as well, including Pakistan and others, and so I don't want to get ahead of that. Um, I'm not going to say when this is going to happen. Um, it could happen soon, but it may take longer as well. Okay. What tools does the Secretary envision um, to turn around the conflict in Afghanistan? Well, I, I think one of the things uh, that the Secretary feels very strongly about is um, trying to develop, get to a place where we can have some sort of a peace process. And that means actually sitting down and talking with members of the Taliban and starting to facilitate that kind of dialogue. Ultimately, uh, like in many situations, in many other countries, uh, military options or military strategy is not necessarily going to win those countries and put peace back together. It's part of it, it's part of it, but in the long run, you have to bring both sides of the table or multiple sides to the table together to determine their future. So am I reading correct? You, uh, she, he's not pro the military option? Well, uh, I'm not – I mean, that's a piece of it. Of course, the military option is a piece of it, but the Secretary of State is not going to advocate um, or is not going to work on General uh, – on Ms. McMaster's behalf or on General Mattis's behalf. That, that is their piece of it to decide at the Department of Defense and at the – uh, and as the National Security Advisor, our piece of, of it to work on is more from the diplomacy standpoint and humanitarian assistance. Okay. Um, hi, Nazira. Hi. Nice to see you. She's our Afghan journalist. So uh, welcome back. Thank you very much, Nazira. As you can me now, I'm uh, working as an independent journalist. Uh, you might know about yesterday's, yesterday big attack in Afghanistan. So many people have been killed and injured, and Taliban took the responsibility. On the other side, uh, Defense Secretary General Mattis also not satisfied about the Pakistan pressure toward the Akhani network and Taliban. And also, Pentagon uh, spokesman said that $50 million will not deliver to Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan is supposed to bring more uh, pressure 
to Taliban and Akani network. Do you have any comment about it? Sure. Um, well, first, Thank let you. me start out by uh, talking about the attack in Kabul. C yes. Uh, July 24th took place yesterday. Uh, they killed at least 35 people and wounded many, many more. Uh, we want to send our condolences to the family of the, the families of those who were killed and also those who were injured. Um, Afghanistan is a good friend of the United States. Um, that is something you all have experienced some terrible, terrible uh, terror attacks in your country. And our hearts go out to you and your people. I know your family has been affected by this as well. Um, sure. and, and that is something we, we yeah. care deeply about. Uh, the latest attack targeted civilians and public servants. Um, my understanding is that uh, one of our guards, a local Afghan, was killed in the blast as well. So our, our, our heartfelt sympathy goes out to his family. Uh, we're aware that members of the Taliban have claimed responsibility. We know that the Taliban um, has become uh, more dangerous and more deadly and has been involved in the kinds of attacks that perhaps previously they have not been involved with, and that remains a major concern of ours. Still, you're optimistic about peace process with the Taliban, although well, they show every day you know, the negative. I, I think it's I think it's premature to say that, but when we can get to the point where we might be able to help facilitate, along with Afghanistan, to get people to sit down and talk together, then that would certainly be a step in the right direction. Until then, we will continue to support our Afghan partners. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Hi. How are you? Sure. That, okay. That Wait, you have one on Afghans? Uh, yeah. What do you say to critics who say you don't have enough people working in the State Department to even pursue a peace process? So, um, we do. We have a, a, a wonderful lady, uh, Ambassador Alice Wells, who has come over to uh, lead for the time being. And, and I think uh, a fault of ours here from this podium is that we've not done enough to talk about the people we've put in place to do to do the good work. And some of that has kind of gotten pushed by the sidelines because we've had so much going on with the DPRK and Russia and all of that. Um, Alice Wells, we were thrilled to have her come back here at the State Department. She had previously served as U.S. Ambassador to Jordan and uh, numerous other places. So uh, she has remained very engaged in the process. She's a terrific leader. We're looking forward to having her a part of that. She has taken on, for at least for the time being, the duties of the Special Representative for Afghanistan and Pakistan. And so these issues, uh, these will still be addressed. We still have a team of people. I met with uh, three or four of our uh, Afghan-related people today to talk about some of the policy issues. And so they're engaged and they're working hard at it. It's something they care passionately, passionately about. It's something I know they're very invested in. So that has not gone away. That won't go away. So, so there and has not been disbanded. Um, and if it if it hasn't been, why would the previous holder of that job do a, you know, on, on the record interview with, uh, and say that the entire office was been closed down? Well, you know, look, uh, we believe in uh, in free speech. Uh, you're referring to Laurel Miller. I, I've met with Laurel, and uh, she did some fantastic work here. Um, she's entitled to go out and talk to reporters about her time. Yeah, but you're saying that you're that. saying that what she said was was flat well, out wrong. No, um, we we have Alice Wells, who's in position. Uh, she's in the position to handle the SRAP duties for now and for handling that bureau. If um, I walk downstairs to the. I haven't, you know, I haven't walked down there lately. I don't know what the status the is of that office. But someone, here is answer? what is important, and I know people are obsessed. Or are there with, movers hold on. in there? I know people are obsessed with. Are you shutting down this bureau? <clears throat> are you shutting down that bureau? Are you shutting down the global office of whatever, whatever? All of those functions will still remain here at the State Department. That is not changing. A different person may handle it. In some instances, it may get combined with an existing bureau. That doesn't mean that the priority goes away, and that doesn't mean that the functions of that job or its duties will go away. I want to be very clear about that. There's been a lot of reporting on that. Those functions will still remain here at the State Department, okay? And th that's all I'm going to have for you on that. Work for the okay. ambassador now? Um, is his Laurel staff now work for the ambassador? Is the staff still there? I, I, let me get back to you on that. I know, I know. Um, maybe there have been a couple departures, but uh, for the most part, the people I see every day handling Afghanistan and Pakistan and India issues are all the same. Yeah. Okay. Even the fact that uh, Alice Wells is both the uh, acting special rep for the uh, Office of Afghanistan, uh, SIAP, and mm -hmm. she's also acting um, for the ACA. What is the uh, in the future, will the office report into SCA bureau? I'm sorry, what was the last part? The In the future? Yeah, what uh, what is the plan uh, with the special SRAP being 
uh, reporting to the Bureau of ACA. So um, my understanding is that she will be working on both issues right now. She's hard at work. Um, she was here when the Afghan girls arrived and meet them at the airport, just one small example. She remains very passionate and engaged in these issues. Where that title of special representative goes in the long term, I'm not sure just yet. We have 70 some special representatives here at the State Department. Some are congressionally mandated, others are not. But what I can tell you is that every single function of a special representative of this or that, all of those issues will still be addressed. We're not going to stop caring about Afghanistan, for example, if there's not a special representative. The functions will still be done. I don't think I can say that more strongly or more clearly than that. Okay, let's talk about North Korea. Okay. North Korea. On the North Korean travel ban. Yes. And that if we violated the travel prohibition to the North Korea, what are the specific details of penalties? Um, I, I don't want to get ahead of that just yet. Um, mm -hmm. Let me get back with you on what the exact penalties will be. Mm -hmm. The travel ban will go into effect 30 days after it get, is listed in the Federal Register. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot here about the dangers of traveling to North mm -hmm. Korea. I saw in one major newspaper today where people were talking about, oh, there are neat experiences in North Korea, which makes it sound like it's a fantastic place to go. Let me use this as an opportunity to remind people it is not safe for Americans to go to North Korea. Let me remind you, we still have Americans who are being detained in North Korea. We don't want to see any more people go to North Korea and be detained. And that is why we put that travel ban in place. That travel ban had been under consideration for quite some time. Um, important to note, Matt, I know you had this question earlier. People will be able to apply to go to North Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, journalists may be able to apply, for example. Some will. Well, you but, certainly can. You certainly can. So you uh, have And it's adjudicated on a case-by-case -case basis. You know all of that. So uh, if you have important work to do there that is really necessary and the work that journalists do is important to have that uh, on-the-ground accurate information, we certainly value that. Um, you'll still be able to apply for that kind of thing. So Let you, me get back to you, though, with the specifics on what the penalties would be for Americans to travel there. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, we're, we're going to stay in Asia now. Yeah, Korea. Hi. Um, so yeah, I was just I was curious about the humanitarian classification as well. Like, how many U.S. I'm, citizens? I'm North Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, how many U.S. citizens actually go to North Korea for those kinds of purposes? I, I wish we knew that number, but that's not a kind of government number. That it's not a number yeah. that we would track. You think so? And once this takes effect, they're going to have to get special permission. So then so, you'll know. Um, so we don't keep track of that. Okay. And, and nor do we keep track of the number of Americans who, the government doesn't keep track of the number of Americans who travel to, you know, the UK or Australia or, or any other place. We just don't track it in that fashion. Okay. 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 Anything else on Asia? Asia. Oh, yeah, Korea okay. um, but first, I actually want to follow up uh, from last Thursday. Uh, is, is there now a statement, or is there, is there a statement yet about um, the uh, secretary's relationship to the allegations against ExxonMobil regarding uh, Russian sanctions? Are they, what's the first part of your question? Uh, ha, has the has the secretary had the opportunity to put together a statement um, regarding his tenure at, at ExxonMobil? Um, during the period where uh, these allegations of sanctions violations took place. Okay, we're not we're not in Asia. Any no, but I, I, that, my follow up is about. <laughs> Your follow up China. is Asia. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think I was clear on on Thursday, and I'm not going to have a ton for you on this. Right. Uh, Treasury and its Office of Foreign Assets Control was clear, I think, in their um, in laying out their case. The secretary. Uh, went through great effort to uh, not only resign from his company, retire from his company, but also recuse himself from anything related to ExxonMobil. So the secretary has firmly remained, uh, re taken, uh, continued to have that position. He's not going to weigh in on all of that. You could talk to Exxon or you could talk to Treasury if you want more information. Sure, and, and that makes sense with regards to the Russia sanctions, but yeah. my question regarding North Korea, does it at all undermine the uh, department's ability to uh, urge China to adhere to DPRK sanctions when it's still not clear about the secretary's involvement uh, in sanctions violations 
during his tenure at Not at Not at all. I mean, look, China and countries all around the world recognize the threat of North Korea. They recognize the threat when they see an ICBM fired on July the 4th, when they see actions from uh, that regime uh, advancing nuclear weapons and testing. So it's not just in the United States' interest to try to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. It's in the interest of the world. And the world recognizes that. And one good way to try to encourage Kim Jong-un to give up his nuclear weapons and the ballistic missiles program is to apply the pressure campaign. And that was one of the top priorities for the administration when Secretary Tillerson came in. And I've, I've sat there in the meeting and I've listened to him as he's talked with countries around the world about the importance of that pressure campaign and keeping up that pressure campaign to try to remove the money that is uh, enabling uh, North Korea to, to keep going with its program. Sure, but still, doesn't, doesn't that pressure become somewhat undermined if the messenger has a sort of conflict? Not, not, not at all, because this isn't about the United States. The secretary remains firmly committed to pressuring countries and, and, and remains fully committed to the sanctions. And every country around the world, for the most part that we've spoken to, is in agreement with us on that and the dangers of North Korea. And you could talk to any of our allies and they would, they would agree on that. Okay. Yeah. Israel Palestinians. Yeah. There was a time that, that would have led the briefing. But. Right. Um, I'm sorry, Anne. What happened to your question earlier? Uh, we we went to Korea. Oh, to um, okay. okay. So sorry. Uh, well, a, a couple things. Uh, has the secretary been directly involved uh, in any of the outreach to uh, any of the parties, um, Israel Palestinians, Jordanians? Uh, could you detail any of that for us? Um, and then walk us through uh, what Ambassador Friedman is doing. I know mm -hmm. he's been mm -hmm. uh, making a lot of calls and moving around. Um, yeah. So um, Ambassador Friedman and Friedman, excuse me, and also uh, the President's Special Envoy J Jason Greenblatt have spent a lot of time on this. Um, this is an issue uh, we care deeply about. Uh, Mr. Greenblatt is over there right now on Sunday, and as we watched uh, the tensions escalate over the weekend in the past few days. Uh, Mr. Greenblatt jumped on a plane, and he went over there, and he's spoken with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He went to Israel. Um, he's also spending time in Jordan, and he's working very hard to try to de-escalate the tensions there. And that's really our priority, uh, talking to both sides to de-escalate those tensions. Um, this is something, an, an, an initiative, if you will, that is backed by the State Department. Uh, the Secretary of State, along with uh, so many of my colleagues here, are, are involved in this process. When Mr. Greenblatt and Mr. Friedman go to meetings, um, they're, they're backed by our, our staff members. And when they return, they debrief us. I met with uh, Mr. Greenblatt about a week or so ago, and we talked, uh, this was uh, before some of this had, had occurred. But we talked about um, you know, the importance of that, the importance of that rule, and I think there's very close cooperation between the State Department and the White House on that matter. Was there any direct U.S. Uh, engagement in uh, helping the Jordanians get to a place where uh, the diplomatic standoff uh, in Amman could be resolved, which was followed pretty quickly by removal of the metal detector? Specific to the issue of Amman, I I'm not aware if we were involved personally. Um, you know, I think that would be an issue between Jordan and Israel. As it pertains to, um, uh, to the situation in, in Israel itself, that's something that we have been involved with in trying to de-escalate those, those uh, tensions, and Mr. Greenblatt was directly involved in that. Can you make any of these calls? I, I'm not sure. I don't have any calls for you to read out for you right now, but if I have anything for you on that, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, yeah. Do you guys, I, we talked about, a little bit about this a lot last week, although I was unable to pry an answer from oh, you. Maybe okay. I can okay. now. I and that has going. to do with the metal detectors and yeah. their replacement. So yeah. did you guys think that it was a, or do you think that it was a good idea for the Israelis to remove the metal detectors? I think, and, and I'm going to repeat this again, anything that serves to de-escalate tensions okay. and, and pave the road for the two sides to come together and have conversations not only about this, but also about the peace process moving forward, we would certainly support that. As you know, we support uh, the maintenance of the status quo at that site, and uh, we welcome all sides and their commitment to the status well, quo. Well, right. So, uh, the, so the Israelis say that they're going to take the metal detectors away but replace them with these uh, 
high tech, high, high, high definition, high resolution cameras. This is something that I spent hours with your predecessor because the previous Secretary of State got an agreement between the Jordanians and the Israelis for cameras similar to this that never were put in place because the Palestinians objected. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this new arrangement with cameras is 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 a, is, a, is a step in the right direction? Well, uh, and does it change the status quo? I think I think that we would leave it to those parties to determine what works for them. Ultimately, and, and as it goes with the peace process, ultimately it's their decision to make. Both parties have to be able to live with it and be able to work with it. We are merely here as a supporter, a facilitator of peace. And, and that's not going to change, but they have to be able to work together. So this isn't something that you would advocate. You would not, this administration would not say to the Jordanians, the Palestinians, and the Israelis, look, we think that these high-tech cameras are the way to go. I'm not, aw I'm not aware of that conversation taking place. Um, what I, you know, what I do know is that uh, Tensions seem to be lessening a little bit. We're, we're pleased with that. It looks like it's going in the right direction right now. It, obviously, a very fragile reg region. So I, I don't want to, you know, add to anything there that could potentially heighten concern. Uh, we're happy that Mr. Greenblatt's there, and let me just leave that at that. Okay. One, one, one last very brief have, thing on, on, on Israel, and this has yeah. to do with, I don't know if you're aware of this. I pointed it out earlier, but the, or a, a, a small group of um, pro-Palestinian activists were prevented from getting on a flight to Israel in at Dulles because they said that they were, uh, the airline said that they had a letter from the Israeli government saying that they would not be admitted to the country. This is under their new law, the Israelis' new law, which allows them to bar supporters of the BDS, boycott, mm -hmm. divestment, sanctions movement from entering. These people were American citizens. Do you guys have any issue um, with, with them being denied uh, the plane ride? Oh, we're certainly familiar with that report. Uh, <clears throat> we're aware of that. Uh, we have a strong opposition to the boycotts and sanctions uh, against Israel. I think we've made that position very well known. Um, as a matter of general principle, as many of us know as Americans, I know not everybody here in this room is an American, but uh, we value freedom of expression. And that's something that is very important to us, even in cases where we don't agree with the political views of, of others. Um, but for more information on that, I'd ask you to talk to the Israeli government. Well, but is this position. something that you would raise with the Israeli government um, um, to, I, as a, to, to say, hey, look, we have a problem with this or we don't have a problem with this? I'm not aware of uh, whether or not we will bring that up with the Israelis. I think our focus right now will be on de-escalating tensions uh, in the Middle East. Uh, if this does come up and if it's something that I can discuss with you, I certainly will. Okay. 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 We're going to have to go, guys. I'm really sorry. A quick follow-up on, on, on Ambassador Friedman. Yes. Just really quick. I mean, okay. because I know he, he was active behind the scenes and so on. Was uh -huh. he freelancing or was he coordinating with the Secretary of State? Freelancing? I mean, was he doing it? There, there's no own? freelancing. In okay, <laughs> so was he coordinating? There's no freelancing. Was he coordinating all his efforts with the Secretary of State, okay. his boss? The efforts that the White House is engaged with as it pertains right. to Israel and all this, we are aware of those efforts. We stay in close contact. I was uh, speaking with um, uh, Mr. Greenblatt's colleagues earlier today. Uh, my other colleagues have spoken with uh, uh, Mr. Friedman's. Folks, so we remain in close contact about this. There's n there's no freelancing going on, okay? okay. Yes. Okay. Um, you said that the secretary was taking a little time off. Um, yeah. Was that something that has been uh, planned for a while, or was that time is taking off in response to the speculation? No, about his I'm glad you asked that question. This is um, my understanding is that this was time that he had planned for quite some time. Okay. And and thanks, it, everybody. Is the State we'll Department alarmed by these reports out of Mexico? All these allegations that the tourists down there have been drugged or. Um, you know, I mean, there have been these incidents where they're they're getting injured or worse, and it seems like it's either poor quality alcohol or druggings or something. I mean, it's it's a mystery. Is that something that that you're alarmed about or watching? You know, I I think let me get back to you with that in um, in particular. But I know that we are uh, concerned with travelers. We give travelers warnings about uh, places that they.